What is up, everyone? We are going through the PFF 2023 early draft board. Top 50 just dropped this month here on PFF.com. Go check it out. Trevor has not seen it yet, though. So we're going to play a little guessing game with some of the bigger names in college football, one of the more, some of the more intriguing prospects to see where Trevor thinks they ended up on the PFF draft board. And then I'll say why exactly they ended up where they did. So Trevor, let's get right into it with the enigma of college football the one that everyone wants to see on a football field but no one has quite seen in a minute here eric gilbert the tight end from georgia who hasn't played a snap for georgia just yet played for lsu his freshman year before transferring where do you think he falls in the pff draft board Oh man. Uh, well, first off, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a bad friend because I haven't seen the article yet, but I guess it works out because now we get to do a video about it. But uh, man, are you Gilbert? So I, I'm just going to let you guys know, I had him as my number one tight end in this class after summer scouting because his tape is hilarious. What is he? Six foot five, 250 pounds. Like it just, the movement skills should not exist for a player like this. I, I'm reminded of, you know, Kyle Pitts was a little bit different because he, he had a little bit of a different body type, but I'm reminded of the way that we talked about OJ Howard. Remember that when he was coming out of, of Alabama and before he was, a little bit underwhelming in the NFL. We were like, this guy can do everything. He's got the body type to be the greatest tight end we've ever seen. I feel like when I pop on the tape of Reed Gilbert, at least even the freshman tape, the only thing that we have to go off of at LSU, it is incredible. It's we're in the top 50. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 41. I'm gonna go closer to 40 just because he's an unbelievable talent, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna guess 41. I'm gonna say 41 for Gilbert. Where is he? I'm 49. On the list, Ooh, I kind of hedged. In. Okay, I hedged because, like I said, talent-wise, it's top twenty player in the class. He is not a. He is that guy who has that tier one sort of tight end athleticism that can be a wide receiver, that can be a tight end, that can line up anywhere on the football field and get open, break tackles after the catch, threaten down the football field. He's the highest ranked tight end recruit of all time, but he. Did not play last year for personal reasons, undisclosed. Still don't know why. Shows back up to Georgia in the spring, 300 pounds. Had to shave 50 pounds over the course of the spring. That is a worrisome sort of career arc that he is on right now. Not to say that he can't turn it around, not to say we haven't seen guys turn it around, but at this moment in time, I really can't go any higher than that because talent's there, but you just gotta see this dude play football at this point. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he He's special. When you throw on the tape, uh, I remember watching it and I, like I just started laughing. I just started laughing out loud how well he moves for a player of his size, but you're right. That LSU tape, long time ago at this point, and even if he lost a little bit, he's playing in a crowded tight end room at Georgia too. You know, Brock Bowers in front of him. Yeah. You got Darnell Washington there. Are they gonna move Gilbert like more to a wide receiver? Who knows? So there's a lot of there's a lot to process with his scouting, and it makes it probably makes more sense that you've got him at 49 than having him up there. Maybe I'm a little crazy with how high I am on him because we haven't seen him in so long, but man, the talent is wild with this dude, and I hope he can achieve it because we'll see some fun Georgia football if that's the case. All right, let's go to another physical freak, a guy who I don't really have off-field questions about. I really don't have any questions about. It is mm -hmm. RB1, the PFF draft board, Bijan Robinson from Texas. Where do you think he falls overall in the top 50? Oh man! Keep in mind, so, PFF. We hate running backs. So I was I was going to say, how much it. does positional value go into where your rankings so are it here? Does it? Ha it it's got to carry a decent amount of weight for us, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Bijan Robinson's still incredible, though. I, what was it? I, I think it was right around 0. 0.4 or 0. 0.41 forced missed tackles per attempt, which is the fourth or fifth best number that we've had in the last five years. Crazy. This dude is so physically gifted. He's so great. He's so productive. He makes up for when the offensive line doesn't help him out, which is something that is really important to running back play, especially a value like we just mentioned right there. I'm going to guess B. John Robinson. I'm not going to say top 10. I don't think we're going to put a running back in our top in our top 10. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go like 16. I'll say 16 for Bijan Robinson. Where are we here with him? 24. And again, positional okay. value. Right. That's as high as we've had a running back since I believe Saquon Barkley. So that that is a high praise for a guy. We have not come close to that ranking. Uh, I think Kenneth Walker last year checked in uh, in the high 40s for us as RB1. So that, that is high praise. And a lot of it has to do with, obviously, the fact that he's a special talent, but also the dude can play wide receiver. I mean, have you seen right. him right. split out and run routes? Like, like he is a dynamic all-around weapon that, if you just wanted to move him to wide receiver, 
Like he could even maybe push higher on the PFF. Draft. That's, that's why. That's why. That's why I went with the top yeah. twenty. I tried to sneak him into the top twenty there because he's a good one. Because he brings value to the passing game. But all right, twenty four. I think you're a little low with twenty four, but we can work with it. All right, I'm going to sneak a Notre Dame guy in here. And now he hasn't played a snap for Notre Dame yet, but Brandon Joseph, the safety, transferred over from Northwestern. I believe he was the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year a couple years ago in the COVID year of 2020. Where do you see him falling on the PFF draft board? Yeah, impact dude, super smart dude. Like you said, he, he was he was an award winner. He was a standout player. I know he was a team captain when he was at Northwestern. There's a lot to love about this guy. Hey, you know, you're a Notre Dame guy, so even though he hasn't played yet, I got to think there's some the bias involved. So he could be a little bit higher on your board than, uh, than anybody else's. But let's go, I'm going to say... 37 for Brandon Joseph. Where are we here? Yeah, I gave him a little bit more bump. 34. He comes in as PFF. Okay, chapter. I'm close. So I'm close. close. All right, I'm close. That was Being a good close. one. But Joseph, man, his ball skills are insane. He had the one-handed interception a couple years ago against Ohio yes. State in that Big Ten title game. And we talked to Marcus Freeman on the on our podcast a couple months ago, talking about Brandon Joseph and asking him, you know, what does he see? And he said, Early on, you know, he had made a few plays in practice where, you know, had some picks, but they were kind of like gimme picks, he thought. And then he's like, they just kept happening. He just kept being in the spot where the ball was going to go, even if it was an off-target pass. And that's him. Nine picks the last two seasons in the COVID-shortened year. And then last season for Northwestern, he just always seems to be in the right place. A true ball hawk at the safety yeah. position, even if he's not an all-around box safety that you're going to want to put there or defend the run he is your modern too high guy who can make plays in coverage yeah he's he d d awareness is so important for being a safety you are operating with so much space that you have to flirt with that line of you know you're kind of baiting a quarterback a little bit playing on the edge of your zone yet you've got to know your athletic limitations can you have the range to get where that ball is going beat the wide receiver to the catch point, all that kinds of stuff. And Joseph's got really great spatial awareness. He sees things so well, and it's so important for a team leader and a communicator and a guy on the back end. All right, let's move to the defensive line of scrimmage where we're going to go to the edge class, talented edge class, and okay. one of them is comes from a school where you do not usually find edge talent. Hell, you do not usually find any talent in terms of the NFL. Army edge rusher Andre Carter. Oh. Six foot seven, 260. Where do you see him falling on the PFF draft board? Dude's got some of the most unique tape that I watched of anybody this summer. His six foot seven frame sticks out like a sore thumb. And they will sometimes, and for a six foot seven guy, you go, all right, he can't have the best flexibility or bed, edge bending in the world. So Army will play him in like the widest nine alignment and just tell him to sprint straight for where the quarterback's going to be at his drop step. But it works, man. What do you have, like 15 and a half sacks last year? Something crazy. It was He was right behind Will Anderson. I know that when it came to sack production in the country. Man, we've got to be high on him. We, we've got to, I think, because you said that Bijan didn't make the top 20. I think I've got to think that this guy's in the top 20 here. Unique size, good production already. I'll say, I'll say 14 for, for Andre Carter. I'll say 14. Where are we here with him? I'm even higher. He's number 11 on the PFF draft board. Okay, I, wow, I, nice. I just see special tools with that wingspan at six foot seven, 265, and the ability to move at that size. And a guy who's just really kind of just scratching the surface because he came to Army, a tight end, at 230 pounds and has built his body up into 265 pounds and really still – doesn't even use that power too much. Like he has a bunch of moves at his disposal that, you know, not to hate on the Army coaching staff, not trying to do that by any means, but like get this guy in a real program or a real sort of developmental environment where he's going up against NFL tackles, where he's not going up against guys in practice who are, uh, you know, glorified drive blockers in the run game. I think he could take his game to another level that tied Aiden Hutchinson for the highest pass rushing grade in the country last year, that this yeah. guy's only really just scratching the surface of what he could be. Dude, he's he's fantastic, and like the the hands are always working, man. He is so annoying to block. That's 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 yeah. what I watch when I watched his tape. It was just like, man, you could tell offensive tackles are. I hate going up against this guy. The hands are constantly moving. He's always trying to disengage. Those long arms make it really difficult once he gets that reach advantage on you. So natural leverage is six foot seven, something that he'll never have. But 
And he does a pretty good job of making the most of that length and using that leverage to put offensive tackles back on their heels as well. So he's getting leverage kind of in a different way. I'm glad that you got him that high. I'm glad he's in the top 15 because, yeah, he's a, he's a damn good and a unique player. Yeah, Army has not had a first rounder since 1947. Some tells me he might be the first Ooh. one. All right. Have to go to the quarterback class. Have to get one guy in here. And we're going to go okay. C.J. Stroud, the Ohio State quarterback. Not going to tell you where he falls in terms of the quarterback rankings until after <sighs> you guess here. That was that was going to be my that was going to be that would have helped a lot. That would have helped a lot to know. I was going to try to like who <laughs> wants to be a millionaire with getting a, getting a lifeline. Where was he in the quarterback ranking? Okay, I think I think you still had Bryce Young at the top of the quarterback ranking. Okay, so I'm I'm thinking that Bryce Young is is at number one. We mentioned positional importance goes into it, so we know that. See, I know C.J. Stroud isn't getting out of the top five. There's no way. You've got talents like Will Anderson, like Jalen Carter, that could be vying for those spots right there. But it's still a quarterback. I'm gonna say C.J. Stroud is number three on the big board. I'm going to say Bryce Young and Will Anderson are right ahead of him. Nailed it. He is number Let's three. Go! Let's to get go! Let's go! We got one, baby! Well done. All right. So yeah, Bryce Young, Will Anderson, and then C.J. Stroud. That's how the top of the PFF board goes. Not to This is not hating on C.J. Stroud by any means. Those guys, to me, the Alabama duo, are just a special pair of prospects. C.J. Stroud is also in that caliber of franchise quarterback, and he's going to get the Ohio State knock depending on how Justin Fields fares this year, going to get all those comparisons to him. But he does not play the position anything like Justin Fields, in my opinion. He barely scrambled. He just did not break the pocket at all. This guy is a true pocket passer. Love his release. Love the consistency of his mechanics. And he operates so quickly, so efficiently. And yeah, you could say it's easy to do in that Ohio State offense with guys getting open every single time. But he makes some special throws down the football field still, too, with that. I, I do think that he is... At this moment, like a guy that I would put in the franchise quarterback conversation right now if I were to have to draft. You know, if we're doing this draft right now, I'd take him number one or number two or number three. I'd be more than willing to do so. Putting these guys under the microscope for the first time with a draft lens is a lot of fun for me to do during the summer because I watched C.J. Stroud as an underclassman like everybody else did, but I just watched him from the broadcast angle, right? I was a college football fan. I was just watching him when I was watching him on Saturdays. I went into this summer thinking, I really did. I was like, Jackson Smith and Jigba, uh, Jeremy Rucker, Garrett Wilson, uh, Chris Olave. Like, all he, he had the ability to throw to all these guys, all those great running backs. Like, I'm not going to like C.J. Stroud. He's just a facilitator. He's just another Ohio State quarterback kind of facilitator type. He is not. I was immediately impressed with his mechanics, his lower body, his upper body, how consistent everything was with him. And like you said, he is a true pocket passer, a fearless one, one that can make all the throws in the football field. I was so impressed with C.J. Stroud when I watched him this past summer. I think a top three spot on the big board absolutely deserved. And I promise anybody who's watching out there, I did not cheat. This is not staged. I didn't look this up. That was a pure guess. You're not taking this win away from me. I was in the same boat as you, though, in terms of going into C.J. Stroud's tape being like, I did not expect franchise-type quarterback tape because – I was at the Oregon game. My biggest exposure to him was being on the field at the Oregon game and just seeing him be erratic and inconsistent and not being right. able to lead that comeback. And I was like, that's who, in my mind, I thought he was going to be. And then after he got hurt, I believe he missed the Tulsa game or it was maybe after the Tulsa game, mm -hmm. he came back a different dude. He, he was yep. much more poised down the stretch. And so if you flip on the Oregon tape versus any game versus the Utah game in the bowl in the Rose Bowl, that's a different quarterback altogether. The guy that played in the Rose Bowl showed up there. That is a franchise-level NFL quarterback. Trevor, you got one. C.J. Stroud, number three overall on the PFF draft board. If you haven't read it, like Trevor hasn't, I hope he goes and checks it out. I hope you guys go and check it out at PFF.com. Appreciate you tuning in.